Monday Night Raw from Toronto. Dave said this crowd was dead, but I thought this crowd was hot. They did die a little bit during matches, but man, people would come out and they'd go nuts. Seth Rollins and Riddle brawled all over to open up the show. It was a good brawl, but I mean, this was their only appearance on the show. Just something to do to, uh, you know, build towards that pay-per-view match. Then we had Trish Stratus coming down to the ring. Got a huge ovation. And she cuts his promo, and out come Bailey, Eo, and Dakota. And they tease attacking her three on one. So she says, Well, I got back up here. And out comes Bianca. And the heels say, Well, we still have the advantage. And so the music gets again. Out comes Asuka and Alexa. Heels back off. This leads to the opener which was EO and Dakota versus Zoska and Alexa Bliss. Got 19 minutes and is a very good match. And let me tell you something. When this EO and Asuka got in the ring together, good Lord, they were great. And, you know, one of those things about Vince was, is his mindset was, what do we need EO for? We've got Asuka, which is preposterous, but that's what he did. And so now he's gone. And so now we can have EO and Asuka on the same brand. And they're out here just tearing it up in the ring. And uh, finally there at the end, uh, Dakota Kai misses a boot. Sky got a blind tag. Asuka went for the Asuka lock. Dakota uh, snuck in, rolled up Asuka, pinned her. My only complaint is as much as I don't mind the name, I wish you were back to being Io Shirai. Because Sky and Kai and Dakota and Io, and I'm going to screw this up until the end of time, as others have. We had a Dolph Ziggler promo that led to a match with Finn Balor. 13-minute match. It's Dolph Ziggler and Finn Balor. They had a very good match. Kicked out of a lot of near falls. Got a chant that I cannot say here on the air after... Ziggler hit the zigzag, and Finn kicked out. And finally, uh, Rhea ends up hitting Ziggler. He stumbles backwards. Balor hits the 1916 coup de grace. Finn Balor beats Dolph Ziggler. It was a very good match. A lot of good wrestling in the first hour of this show. We had an Aaliyah promo. God bless her. Listen, I never say that anyone should get fired, but I will strongly recommend what I think would help a lot of people. And what would help Aaliyah is to find a really good worker and go to the performance center and do nothing but, like, wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Call it in the ring. Call it in the ring. Call it in the ring. Don't plan anything. And find a local improv class because she's standing there and she is acting with a capital A during this segment. And if you watch it, it's like, she still thinks she has to stand a certain way, and so everything, she's just so awkward. God bless her. But she needs to do a couple things. And then you know what? She might end up great. So anyway, Alpha Academy did an open challenge. And who should accept in Toronto but Kevin Owens? Roof blows off this place. This guy comes out. You'll never guess. They had an excellent 11-minute match. All sorts of big spots. Chad Gable's just dropping this poor guy in his head and neck over and over again. It was brutal. And uh, finally there at the end, Owens, uh, he gets the win, and then he gets jumped. And the fans start chanting for Sami Zayn, but Sami is, is unavailable. But fear not, it is hometown. Kevin Owens is attacked two-on-one, and he beats up both guys, gives a stutter to Otis, power bombs Gable onto Otis, and walks out a hero. This is an excellent segment. Then we had Bailey and Aaliyah. Not excellent. This is this is Bailey's first TV match since coming back. And she was good. She did the best she could. But this was not a good match. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say any more. I don't want to be mean. But it wasn't good. And then Bailey won. We can all move on. Miz and Ciampa versus AJ and Bobby Lashley. This was the only show on the only match on the show with a disqualification. And uh, the disqualification was actually kind of preposterous because in storyline, Dexter Loomis is not signed. 
Dexter Loomis is the creep from the creep farm. He's creeping around all these. He's not a signed wrestler, okay? So at one point in the match, it was a good match. I mean, you got all four of these guys in there. Miz, Chomp, well, not Miz, but Chomp, AJ, and Lashley all did a really good job. Miz was fine. But AJ's outside, and some bro in the crowd crabs AJ by the neck. And they also have all these security guys come out, and they drag this guy away. And he's like, what the heck was that? That guy grabbed me by the neck. Well, they keep wrestling. And then uh, Miz ends up outside, and some dude grabs her around the neck. The ref immediately calls for the bell. It's a disqualification. I'm like, why is that a disqualification? But that other guy attacking AJ, that wasn't a DQ. Well, this is the creep from the creep farm, and he drags Miz away. And so they call for the bell. I guess it's a no contest. And then uh, Lashley and Styles beat up Ciampa and uh, lay him out to end the segment. Baby faces head held high again. Then we had the Johnny Gargano segment, which was awesome. Just got a huge reaction. Out comes Austin Theory. Of course, they were together in NXT. And Austin Theory... You know, he used to be Gargano's son. That's why the fans chanted, who's your daddy? And so, you know, Gargano, uh, he says, man, it's good to see you've changed so much. Theory says, you know what? I have changed a lot. It's good to see you. And you know what? I need somebody to carry my bags, carry my briefcase, have it ready when I'm about to cash in. I'd love to have you play that role, Gargano. Gargano's like, yeah, yeah. And so, uh... Theory wants to do the old high five, and he raises his hand, and Johnny does a dance, and then ba bam! He hits a super kick and lays out Austin Theory, gets a big pop, leaves. So apparently, we're going to have Johnny Gargano versus Austin Theory, which honestly will be good because Austin Theory needs a Johnny Gargano to help learn, learn how to work. And then the main event was Edge and Damian Priest. It was 20 minutes. So, one of those matches where you know, if you watch, like, a lot of, of AEW and, you know, modern wrestling, you probably would say that you were bored with this match. But this was an old-school, very good, professional wrestling match. It was very simple. They built to the finish. It was like they say, every move meant something. They did all their near falls there at the end. And then finally, Edge hits a Canadian Destroyer and then a Spear. And he gets the pin. And then afterwards, the heels go after him. And who should make the save but his wife, Beth Phoenix? She hits the ring. So it looks like we're going to have some sort of six-person with uh, Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, and uh, Rhea Finn and Damian Priest against, I I guess it would be Edge, Rey Mysterio, and Beth. And poor Dom's the odd man out. Uh Uh-oh. Like usual. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. And that's it. It's a good show. This is a good Raw. And next week, it's Kurt Angle's return in Pittsburgh. Seth Rollins and Riddle face-to-face. And the finals. The finals are next week of the Women's Tag Team Title Tournament. I wonder if that'll main event the show. It's possible. I guess you could go ahead and do something like that. We'll see. I mean, all the lead-up into... Clash at the castle, though, too. You know, it'll be interesting. But I like the chaos to begin the show with Riddle and and uh, Seth Rollins. The tag match, as you mentioned, go figure. Asuka and Io would be a good combination together since they were, you know, teaming with each other in 2010. And this is something a lot of people have been hoping for for a long time, some interaction there. Imagine if they could have gotten Kyrie into the mix more with those two as well. I mean, it just... There was so much opportunity that was wasted with some of Triple H's NXT and how people were treated on the WWE main roster, if they ever even got there at all. I was curious as to why Gargano would be coming back in Toronto as opposed to Cleveland, but in hindsight... I thought it was a much better choice. You know, if you want to make an impact with this guy, what better than him walking out there in front of 16,000 people at Scotiabank or however many people that were there? It was legitimately sold out, and it made him a big deal. It made some impact, and I don't think long term, you know, he's going to be more than a guy that's there to 
be the gatekeeper, you know, to get over the hump and to help guys get over the hump like Austin Theory. But I think he's a great guy to do it with. He and Ciampa, that's the kind of mid-card I've been hoping for. You throw Mustafa Ali, some other people into that mix of people with credibility that you can have there that we're not looking at in the same vein that we're looking at Drew and Roman and Brock and Kevin Owens and some other people. But they have a really important purpose to serve on the show. And not only that, be very entertaining in the process too. This was the best thing on the show and uh, the show was all downhill from there so uh, I guess I can continue on to uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch for the Did I really see this? And that my friends is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.